This is the Hubble Space Telescope. It takes really cool photos of deep space. You've probably seen some of them. And this is Jill McGuire. Her really cool job is to help build the tools that fix Hubble so it can take those photos. We work hand in hand with the astronauts to actually develop the tools with them to make sure that it fits exactly what they need to do to do the task. So we're, we're working on the ergonomics, on the, the handles and the triggers and you know all the parts that they have to activate. McGuire heads up a team that designs and builds tools like these. On the most recent and final Hubble servicing mission, it was these tools and the astronauts that use them that helped give the telescope full use of all five of its instruments for the first time. So the telescope has more capability now than it's ever had. Part of the testing process also requires diving into NASA's neutral buoyancy lab in Houston, about as close to a zero-g environment as you can get on Earth. And so we actually go down, we dive with them, so it's very cool to get to scuba dive while they're in their suits training. And so we're getting to see firsthand how they use the tools and interact with them on using the tools underwater. After they come out of the water, we have a very detailed debrief and, and they go, no, you know, I really would like this here, move this here, make this larger, make it smaller. 114 new tools were processed for this mission alone. And when you factor in versions for testing and neutral buoyancy, the actual number of tools was at least three times that high. Here's just a couple. So this is the first computer controlled power tool in space that we developed on a previous servicing mission and used them on every servicing mission since. One of the other unique tools that I want to show you that we developed for this flight is what we call the RSU changeout tool. It's designed kind of after the pick stick for people in wheelchairs that grab things off of high shelves. So when you push down, it just locks onto the handrail. This is the fastener capture plate that was used to repair the space telescope instrument spectrograph or STIS. McGuire's team had to think of a way to fix a faulty circuit board on STIS without replacing the whole instrument. Sounds simple, right? Except for the fact that in order to access the instrument, it required removing 110 tiny fasteners. 110 tiny fasteners that could go floating off into space. Their solution? This color-coded panel and corresponding drill bits, plus a battery-powered lightweight drill with a built-in LED light. The hole is designed so that the bit will fit through it, but that the fastener cannot come back out. So with all the setbacks, delays, long hours, and time away from family, what made it worth it in the end? Watching that the tools being used by the astronauts on orbit and watching it work and seeing all the repairs and, and the changes take place as planned. Of course, we had a few anomalies along the way, but it, it was the most rewarding thing I think I've ever done in my life. I don't know what I can do in my career that will top what we just did. And it'll be even more rewarding when we actually see the new science pictures come out. Those pictures are expected to appear later this year. For Discovery Tech, I'm Jorge Rivas.